Welcome to the new version of Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast, the podcast for real estate agents everywhere. I'm Lisa B, and together with Beyond Kunzel, we're going to talk about everything real estate. We talk about what's working, what's not working, what's new, what's old, technology, and anything else to do with real estate. We'll answer your questions from the Facebook group, Let's Talk About Real Estate. So if you have a question, we can help. Join the Facebook group today. And again, welcome to the show. Okay, Bjorn, welcome to Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast and the first 30 days in real estate. How are you, Lisa? Doing I'm well? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. A bit cold here in Queensland, but that's okay. Yeah, not as cold as everywhere else, but that's okay. We'll well, it's, it's a bit rainy everywhere at the moment, I think. Yeah, I know, I know. All right, so first 30 days in real estate. So first of all, I want to pre-frame it that real estate is an amazing career, um, the opportunities, the people that you meet, the things that you learn, the financial rewards. And before we start talking about the hard work that's involved, just to know that it's 100% worth it. Like it, it does take time. It does take hard work. But once you get there, it's an amazing career. Like the, the opportunities that we've had, you know, just the people you meet, it's just amazing, isn't it? Yeah, most certainly. I've been doing this for uh, coming up to 14 years now. I couldn't imagine myself or wanting to be doing anything else. Yeah. Um, it's extremely rewarding, both financially, gives you a lot of freedom and gives you a lot of opportunity to help a lot of people and meet yeah. people in all walks of life. So it's, it's unlike any other career out there and mm. I love it and it's extremely rewarding. So anybody that's getting involved, just understand 100% if I could do it all again, I'd go through all the hard times again just to be oh. here now. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, you know, a lot of people that start in real estate ask the ideal day, like what's the ideal day? And I don't think there is an ideal day. There's actions that you can do. There's results that we need to get. So we'll talk about some of those actions that, that we need to do. Yeah, um, I, think so, an ideal, I, I think an ideal day is just getting out there and doing it, to be quite honest yeah. with you, Lisa. Yeah. Um, too many people spend too much time planning and trying to get things perfect. You just get out there and do it. Just get out there and talk to people. It's really yeah. that simple. That's really right. Is. Yep, and, and if you're working for someone, you're know, working for a boss, obviously they may have different ideas about what, we, what we're about to discuss, but we'll give you kind of a guideline of what, what we recommend. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. There's, so, there's and, no right and wrong. There's lots of, lots of different people that have different opinions on the way of doing things. Yeah. I'll just share my experiences as an agent um, from when I first started and what I did and what helped me get to where I am today. Um, and, you know, everybody's got their own input and their own ideas and ways of making things happen, but we're just here to help and give, give our opinions. Absolutely. So presuming that you've got the appropriate registrations, licensing and all that sort of stuff before we start that's appropriate to your state and country because they're all different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So step one, set yourself up for success. I think that is the number one thing. Be prepared for the commitment, as we said. Um, see it as a long-term career and somewhere to build your empire. Um, Definitely. Yeah, make sure, and, and the right office. Make sure you're in the right office. <laughs> yeah. You want to be in the right environment first and foremost. Um, I, I spent three years in the wrong environment. Um, mm. Wrong environment, I mean, it's not where I wanted to be long-term, but even though it wasn't quite the best environment to be in, I still learned a lot about what not to do. Yeah. And about how not to be doing business and yeah. things that upset people because the operators I had were um, not quite 100% in line with my ethics and morals. Um, mm. Great trainers, mm. great ability and capacity to get listings and get sales, but just some things ethically which, which didn't fit in with me. So, mm. I mean, at the beginning to get started, just attach yourself to someone that you find as being successful and just offer to help them as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually you'll find your right place, your right fit. It might take a couple yeah. of couple of moves, but you'll eventually get there. Yeah. I think make sure you're hanging around positive people. That's a really, a really big thing too. Don't hang around people that are that are negative or think that you can't do it. Yes. Um, make sure you've got the you know positive people in your life. That's probably the most important thing, Lisa, just making sure you're not hanging around with people that are negative or people that have always got a you know half glass full approach. Yeah. You want people that are enthusiastic, people that are energetic, and people that always find solutions to problems yes. uh, in a positive way. Definitely. Absolutely. And I think take your career seriously because um, it's a very important part of someone's life, but also have fun. You know, don't take it so seriously that you are so stressed and you're so whatever, but then don't go the extreme where you're not taking it seriously. There's that balance of, of the two, isn't there? Yeah, of course. And you've got to look at it. I mean, in real estate, we do a course, which is either seven weeks or part-time for 12 months or whatever it might be. 
But then we pretty much are unable to go out there and list and sell real estate off our own accord. If you look at carpenters, tradespeople, plumbers, they go through three-year apprenticeships before they're allowed to go out on their own. So real estate's very different. Mm. But don't treat it differently. You've got to treat the first uh, couple of years as if you were an apprentice. Mm. Um, and that's where attaching yourself to somebody else in the office and offering to help them with open inspections, to run run off their letterbox drops, to do their brochures, to help them with their social, all these sorts of things. The more you can surround yourself around good people that are performing, mm. the more you're going to learn and you're going to get there in a faster manner than if you were just to sit behind a desk and, and make calls. Absolutely. So I think daily rituals prepare mentally every single day. Um, it's, yeah. it's such a mental game. <laughs> like a- it's, it's funny you say that because I think it's like everything in life. I mean, you take football players, okay? They're standing right in front of goal. One day they can kick a goal and the next day it goes AWOL. Now, it's a very simple process to grabbing a ball, lining it up with your foot and kicking it. It should go through every single time 100%, but it doesn't. And the reason why it doesn't is because stuff gets in here, negative stuff gets into here. So if you enable yourself to be in a positive mindset each and every day, regardless of what's going on in your life, um, you'll definitely succeed uh, a lot a lot faster than if you let little things get you down. Absolutely. You, know, you can't let a moment in your life ruin your whole day. If you do, um, you, you're going to find yourself struggling. Absolutely. So yeah, prepare mentally and then write out the vision for how you're going to show up. And I think that's the vision of kicking the ball through the through the goal, it's also the vision of, of how you're going to show up in real estate yeah. um, and anchor that vision, you know, who you want to be in real estate, where you want to be, have that vision of who you are and, and who you want to be in your head. Um, exercise, I think that's a really big thing um, to kind of get get the mental space clear. Um, listen to audio books in the car. I remember Brian Tracy would say, make the car, your car, the university, you know, always be listening to things as you're driving around. I think that's really important. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, just on that, yeah. you know, you can, you've got time in a vehicle between appointments and things like that. You know, there's so many great podcasts out there. There's so much great content on YouTube. There's so many great trainers out there worldwide. I often find myself just Googling random things. Yeah. Um, and just just still to this day, 14 years later, just still listening to people like Tom Ferry, Grant Cardone, Tom Panos, whether it might be yourself in things mm-hmm. that you've done in the past, Glenn Twiddle, mm-hmm. a whole range of different trainers, Michael Sheargold, there's so many of them, Lee Woodward. There's yeah. so much content that's for free nowadays mm-hmm. on YouTube and whatnot that you can grab little golden nuggets from. So when you're in the car, why listen to music if you're trying mm-hmm. to get yourself up and running faster? Why not chuck on one of those educational uh, videos or you shouldn't mm. be watching video but you know what I mean a podcast yeah. or listening yeah. to it in the vehicle and just just yeah. training be training all the time even to this day I'm still training every day learning new yeah. things every single day absolutely training. and even if you're doing letterbox drops or something like that or you're exercising yeah. you know listen to listen to those things 100 yeah, percent. I think yeah. write out your goals every day prepare for what you're going to do every day and focus on the outcome so you know, write down exactly what you're going to do and then the outcome that you want to achieve from doing those actions and focus on that result. That's so important because you're not, unless you know where you're going, you're not going to get there. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't jump on the, the wheel of a car and just go, where am I going to end up? You know where you're heading to and you know which yeah. route you've got to take to get there, what road you've got to go down, yeah. what left turns, what right turns, what stoplights you've got to stop at. It's the same with real estate. If your end goal is to get a paycheck, you need to understand that your, your goal is to find a seller and then find a buyer for that seller. And yeah. you've got to understand that there's several paths that you can take to get into that destination, but you need to to have that end goal in mind because otherwise you'll never get anywhere. So exactly. you need to be very clear with, with what you're trying to achieve for yep. sure. So eliminate distractions and focus, 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 focus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is where an office can sort of be really good in one way, but detrimental in another, because there's a lot of chit chat in an office. Mm. Um, I found myself when I worked in the office environment about a quarter of productivity of what I am now working with my cloud-based model Mm -hmm. so but it was really good at the beginning because when I was new I would say to my boss okay let me learn what have you got to teach me to go okay Bjorn you stay here until nine o'clock at night so I rocked up at eight o'clock in the morning and I stayed there till nine o'clock at night I did the task the tedious task that he gave me to do I followed him around I took notes for him I went to his open inspections I spoke to people at opens he just sort of oversaw everything I was doing but then in the evenings at nine o'clock when everything was done, he will train me for an hour. So he'd spend an hour of training teaching me about negotiation skills, pricing strategies, how to talk to clients. Oh, that's good. 
closing lines, all those sorts of things. So, you know, don't expect if you mm. just want to rock up at nine o'clock and then go home at five o'clock, you're in the wrong job, guys. So yeah. just understand that this is effort equals reward. Yeah. Um, it's highly rewarding. And if you're willing to put in the work and give by saying, look, I'm here to help in any way I can. I just want to learn as much as I can. You receive tenfold. Yeah. So it's the Big law time. of the universe. Give to receive. So Big give time. your services for free. Tell your boss, hey, I'm happy to hang around and do some free training. What can you do? What can I do for you to make your life easy? And in return, what can you train me and teach me? Yeah. You know? Agree. Um, yeah, Agree. Definitely. Okay, so in the office, obviously get familiar with the office, the staff, the systems, who does what in the office. Um, that's important. That's just standard. Um, order yeah. photos and business cards. Obviously you'll need those um, once yes. you're out, you're, you're prospecting, all that sort of stuff. And then, as you said, shadow someone in the office. That's so important. Um, and the big thing point. here, sorry to, sorry to join me, the big thing here is your database, right? Whatever CRM you're being given, whether it's Agent Box, whether it's Active Pipe, whether it's uh, Rex Software, whether it's Eagle, whether it's My Desktop, whatever, there's hundreds of them out there. Yeah. Spend the time while you're learning at the beginning to learn yeah. that database really, really well because that is going to be your gold mine that mm -hmm. you're going to be mining every single day for the rest of your career. And if you set it up right, it's like a house. You get the foundation right, everything else runs smooth. If the foundation's a bit wonky, you're going yeah. to have nothing but trouble for the future. So, so spend your time that you've got free on your database. Yeah, definitely. big time, big time. So inspect current listings held by your office. Go to as many open houses as you can. Like get familiar with the properties and the prices in the area. Um, drive past properties that other agents have got, look at them on realestate.com or on their websites or domain.com, preferably domain. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Domain. <laughs> we don't like realestate.com. So drive past houses that are sold. Yeah, look at the photos and all that sort of thing. So get familiar with the stock. Um, yeah, definitely. That's really important. Yeah. You need to know your marketplace. If you're going to come across to somebody and you're a new rookie in real estate and there's three properties for sale in the area that you're trying to work and you're door knocking or having conversations with people and you're saying, hello, I'm so-and-so, this is my area, this is my suburb, and you can't even tell them about the other three listings that are on the market. Hmm. Come on, guys. just just No, you just have to know the stock. You have to know, exactly. Yeah, um, so know basis. the paperwork that needs filling out for a listing, that you must know. If you don't know it, you fill it in correctly, it could, um, you know, void the agreement. Yes. Um, there's all sorts of trouble that can happen there. Um, the worst thing you can do in the first instances when you're new in real estate is think, oh, gee, I don't want to ask somebody. You, you have, have to ask. Like, especially it's, just, it's, it's the law. <laughs> it's the law. And, and then yeah. if, if you get something wrong, we could be talking about a sale going completely pear-shaped just because you've ticked the wrong box in a yeah. contract. So yeah. get somebody that's experienced to oversee the first you know, dozen or so contracts that you do. That's what we do with our guys. Yeah. Um, we say, you go and do it all, then we'll check it. And then yeah. if it needs correcting, we'll get on the Zoom or whatever. We'll come out and we'll show you what needs to be corrected so you can learn how to do it yourself. So that way you yeah. get the legislation and the legal stuff 100% because there is no room for experimentation no. when it comes to legal stuff. There's not. Zero, zippo, zero. And, and when you're getting your certificate of registration, your licensing or whatever, make sure you understand the legislation of where you're trading because you can be sued, your principal can be sued, um, you know, you've got to be very, very, very careful. So know, know what it is. That's, that's the basics as well. Okay, so now we – oh, sorry, you're going to say something? I was going to say that's basically the stuff that they'll teach you throughout your courses as yeah. well. And that's yeah. where your principal there or your head agent is there or your, um, you know, compliance officer is there for to check everything over to yeah. make sure it's all 100%. Yeah. Make sure you know it. It's not just about, you know um, – uh, passing the exam it's about learning it and knowing it for your career yeah yep. okay so now we're getting to the nuts and bolts so prospect your job is to prospect and find sellers it's not a retail job it's not something where people come in and go there's all the stock you know here's a bottle go and sell it it's um you have to actually find the the properties to sell so this is the job yep. okay so yep. choose how you start to prospect and be consistent with the prospecting um i uh, when I had my office, I would get people prospecting 80 to 100 people every single day. They had to phone every single day. And what that does is get them 
um, psychologically right. It gets them focused on listings. It's get, it gets them talking to more people. It gets them to overcome objections. If you're only doing three or four calls, you're not going to be learning those things. It's like a boot camp. You know, it's really immersing yourself. Um, yeah. and, and always be asking people if they want to sell um, and if they know of anybody else that wants to sell. That's got to be in your mind all the time. You can't be scared to ask. Ask and you yeah. shall receive. You yeah. need to you need to be out there. You need to be prospecting. Basically, re- being a real estate salesperson is a complete reversal of any other sales role in the world. Mm. Because in any other sales role in the world, you're given a product and yeah. you need to sell as much of that product as you can to as many people as you can to, in order to increase the bank balance as much mm. as possible. Mm. In real estate, houses will pretty much sell themselves. Mm. And by that, I mean... You can't make somebody buy a house. They either Mm. want to buy it or they don't. What we do is we negotiate the price, okay? Mm. So we're just negotiating the price, but in order to be able to negotiate the price on that house, we need to find that house to be able to offer it to the market. So we're out there. We are more like a a, a prospecting gold miner. We have to find the business. We have to find the stock, and Mm. then the stock will pretty much take care of itself, and then we negotiate the price on that stock. Yeah. So it's, it's a reverse sales role from anything anyone else is used to. So mm. some people might go, you know what? I used to sell 50 cars a month and I'm the best Toyota car salesperson. That's fantastic. And you might also become the best real estate agent as well. But also, if you're finding that you're really great with buyers, but you've got no experience in how to actually find those vehicles mm. to put onto that lot, find mm. those houses to put on online to take to the market, you're going to find yourself struggling. So sometimes it's a big shock for some people who have been really successful in another sales area because they can move a lot of product, but they don't know how to find products. So our job is pretty much, I was always told, list and last, list Mm, and last. We've got to find the stock, find the listings, and the rest will take care of itself to a certain degree. But it's funny, like I was talking to a guy the other day who's going into boat sales, and I said to him, so how are you going to get your stock? And he was like, oh, well, you know, just talk to people, you know, just, just, you know, they'll come to me kind of thing. And I said, I'd be getting on a jet ski and going around all the canals, seeing different boats, you know, talk to buyers that want to buy certain boats, go around and then see who's got that boat and then prospect those houses. And he's like, oh, no, we don't do that in the, in the boat industry. And I'm thinking, God, it'd be a good industry to get into, wouldn't it? Like if none of them are doing it. Well, but, um Get out yeah. there and prospect for the business, yeah. So work out the way that you're going to prospect. And, and I've got my real estate training community, which I've got about 45 ways to get listings. So if you're unsure how to get listings, that's in the real estate training community. But I think when you're prospecting, um, if you, you're working in an office, then have it lined up that somebody's going to go with you to that listing presentation. So you've got that peace of mind that somebody's going to be coming with you. Yes. Um, then we'll talk about some of the ways to prospect. So I, I always think prospect with per- purpose, um, prospecting for buyers. If you've got somebody that wants to buy in an area, you've got their face in mind, you've got, you know, the, the, you know, their family, you've got the, you know, the kids you've got in mind, what they want to spend. And I find that is one of the best ways to prospect, whether it's, you know, phone prospecting or, or door knocking or whatever. I think that's one of the best ones um, that, that people can actually see it's for a reason and you, you come across believable. You've actually got the person to come through, you know, that come through the property. I, I believe that is one of the best ways to prospect. What do you yeah, think? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. I mean, um, the, the easiest way to get a list of people that you can contact um, because I'm a little bit anti-cold calling, but we'll, we'll get mm-hmm. into that later. I just think mm-hmm. that's a waste of time because people get so many telemarketing messages now, they're not interested. But mm-hmm. you've got agents in your office that have had open inspections, okay? Yeah. They might be too busy to, to call all those buyers back. So you say, look, can I can I go through your calls and do your call list? Mm-hmm. Now, hello, hello, Lisa, you came through property at XYZ Street on the weekend, just wondering what your thoughts were. Yep. yep. Engage in a conversation. Yep. And are you upsizing? Are you downsizing? Okay, mm-hmm. are you renting at the moment or do you actually own your current home? Okay, um, have you got any idea what that property might be worth? Do you mm-hmm. have to sell that property before you can buy that property? Mm-hmm. Are you looking at doing a subject to sale offer um, when you find the right home or can you buy first and then sell later? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, 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 we need to sell a house. Okay, well, when was the last time you received a market assessment on that property? We haven't had one actually. Well, I'd love to pop around 10, 15 minutes, just give you a bit of an idea, a bit of an indication. Mm-hmm. Buyers are sellers, right? Yeah, so unless you've got a first home buyer, a lot of the other people are either upgrading 
or mm-hmm. their, their upsizing or their downsizing. So mm-hmm. really of the four or five categories of particular people looking at buying a home, the, there's about three of those that are actually going to have other houses that they might need to sell. So the quickest way to try to find stock is talk to people that you've already met an open inspection that know who you are and, and try to prospect that way. Yeah, uh, that's just, mm-hmm. just one of the things. To so, do. so the ones that I've got, I've got the prospecting with purpose. That they're the ones that I like doing. Yeah. Um, old database of past appraisals. So if you go into an office and you know there's been you know a, a high turnover of salespeople, as is a normal real estate office, the people that they have done appraisals for ask, can you follow those people up or your buyers? Um, obviously, their their buyer database. Um, old files of properties that have withdrawn from sales, so ones that the office had had before that are now, you know, dormant, the people didn't actually come into the market or didn't sell, um, prospect through those. Um, database and, and, as you said, over-service buyers, um, you know, in callbacks and all that sort of thing because, as you said, they become, they become sellers. Now, if, you know, a, a lot of agents that are new into the industry now are saying, well, you know, I don't have money to prospect, uh, you know, to, to do all the social media ads and do all these things. If you don't have money to market, you don't have those things that we've just mentioned, then you do have to cold call. If you don't have those things, then you do have to cold call. Um, you know, yeah, and- you, don't need, you don't necessarily need money. And there's always people you no. can find. I mean, what, yeah. what I understand with cool, I've always been anti cold calling because the fact of you, you, you're talking to a thousand people, they're just not interested in talking to you. I, I think, why don't you just get off your ass, print out a CMA report of a list of sales, mm. find what houses are for sale in your area, find what streets of house on sale and go, Hello, Bjorn here from so-and-so real estate. There's a property for sale down the road for you. It's got four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two living areas. It's asking 490 to 450,000. Are you interested to see what your house is worth? Mm. Simple. Yep. Right. Yep. No thanks. Well, there you go. There's a report. If you've got my card there, if you ever want to know anything about real estate, just sing out and give me a call. Mm-hmm. They'll look at your card. They'll see that you're not from the company that's selling the house down the road. Mm. They'll realise that you're a go-getter and that the person that's got the house for sale down the road is a lazy real estate agent. Mm. Guess who they're going to call when they want to sell the property? Most likely you because you got off your ass and actually did something. Yeah. And the other agent most likely hasn't even knocked on their door. That's mm. a very, very simple way of actually getting into doors and actually getting people. Yeah. Um, and if somebody says to you, oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind knowing what my house is worth. Now, there's so many trainers out there that say never go in straight away. Don't go in straight away. Bugger it, guys. Forget about all the rules. Give people what they want and everybody wants everything yesterday. Mm. So give it to them. Oh, if you've got time now, I wouldn't mind if you can have a quick five-minute look now. Cool, guys. No worries. Walk on in there. Engage in a conversation. Forget about your flashy brochures that you don't have. Forget about your flashy pre-listing kit that you never dropped off. Who cares? Mm. Give the customer what the customer wants. There's so Mm. much BS in real estate. And so many trainers that, that come up with all these systems, all these people are not robots, they're people. There are so many ways to get business, and that's just one of them, which we've spoken to. I mean, one of our guys got two listings the other day just by using that sort of approach. He was just mm-hmm. on the street, spoke to a guy, had a conversation, kept in touch with the guy for a while. Turns out the person next door just lost their mother as well. They were both houses, deceased estates. Why don't I get some buyers through yours? Well, I've got this one here. It's not going to cost you nothing. We'll see how we go. He's just put 15 grand commission in his pocket yeah. just from just yeah. from asking people and just doing something different. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, and, and like, also too, just the list of withdrawn from sales. Like I, I moved to yeah. an office. Oh, well, I started an office brand, brand new from scratch in an area I knew no one. Um, and that was withdrawn from sales. So other agents listings um, that that they never sold. Um, just prospect those. So just prospect until you you get to to talk to them, until you get to list them. Um, yeah, yeah. And definitely. then, um, yeah, obviously, like you said before, your database, make sure you're keeping a database with your CRM. Um, everyone that you can possibly even think of, put them into your database and keep, you know, following them up. That's so important. Yeah. Okay. It's actually not that difficult to get listings if you give, right? Yeah. There's a clue for people, if you give. Yeah. So if you give them free this, free that, free this, free that, hey, let me go to work for you and let me let me just see if I can make a few calls to some buyers, tell me what price you want, and if we end up getting the price that you want, uh, maybe we can talk about the rest from there. Mm. Cancel any time. Every real estate agent out there 
pretty much all of them, I, I think that they're doing things backwards nowadays in 2021 because they all go out, they all want a 90 day commitment, they all want a two and a half, three grand budget. And the client's like, well, if you're going to be so good and you've got buyers, why do you, I need to pay all this money and why do I need to lock myself into you? Mm-hmm. You know, there's certain things that I, I don't want to give away here that my team are utilizing and they're smashing it in the market, absolutely mm-hmm. smashing it, winning listings hands down over even agents that have been in the game for 10, 15 years just because of an offering that we've got, which yeah. I'm not going to give away here, unfortunately. Yeah. But no, if anybody fine. wants to know what it is, <laughs> reach out and give me a call and I'll tell you yeah. Tell you the phone. Yeah, yeah. All right, so print flyers and drop them in letterbox drops or door knock. Flyers are cheap. Um, decide which social media platforms you're going to use, um, Facebook, Instagram, you know, start to build your foundations. Okay. Um, follow up, go the extra mile, study negotiation. Um, be courteous, say hello to everyone in the street as you walk past. You never know. You know, sometimes you forget. You talk to people, they're buyers, and, you know, just just be nice to everybody. Um, yes. And I think, you know, when, when you're new, I think you do have to prepare, though. You do have to prepare. As you said, if you go into a listing presentation and you don't know the properties that have sold in the area, you don't know what's for sale, you need to prepare. And I think exactly. preparation you get confidence. So, you know, don't, you know, don't kind of um, be be worried about doing that because you do need to prepare. That so, sounds like a, a, a quote of the day from Bjorn. If you fail to prepare, be prepared to fail. It's yes. as simple as that. Yes. And I'll tell you another thing. A, a lot of the best top performing agents in real estate are exceptional communicators. Mm. So if you're starting out, you mentioned social media, have whatever your name is. So I've got Bjorn Kunzel Real Estate on Facebook, Bjorn Kunzel Real Estate on YouTube, just your name and then real estate on whatever platform you're on. It's easy for people to find you out. You've got to brand you. Forget about whatever brand or label you're working under or network under. You've got to brand you. Because people people don't even know half the time what brand I work for. They don't care about Mm. the brand. No. So make it about you. Back Have the backing of your brand, which shows you the, the, the social proof. Mm. Our company has sold this many homes. Now, when you're new in real estate and you haven't got those results, team up with somebody else, ask to be a second agent on their, on their signboards, on their listings, all that sort of stuff, and use we, we. Our office has done this. Our office is this. Yeah. We have done this. We recently sold this. Use the words we. Yeah, and then once you don't you have come, your own results. Yeah, on, definitely. yeah. And then yeah. and then that transfers into I've done this and I've done that once you get the numbers up. But in the beginning, you need to write off the success of others. Um, mm-hmm. And that's why it's really important to have that good, good, good partnership with somebody in the office, but without asking for anything from that person. Yes, absolutely. And and also to start to think about your listing kit as well. You know, if you're going out with somebody else that's doing listing presentation, think about and think about what resonates with you, like you said about your old office. And, and sometimes it might just be that um, it doesn't sit well with you, you know, different ways that people are listing and selling and all that sort of thing. And you've got to find your own style. You've got to, own, you've got to find what you're comfortable with in different ways that you're comfortable in, in listing and selling yeah. and, and make it your, your sort of style as well. So, yeah. I yeah. mean, the, the first place where I started out, the, the gentleman I worked for, the training that he gave me was absolutely exceptional, mm. absolutely exceptional. It, it got me to where I am today, and I still use a lot of those methods that I was taught from him. Yeah. The only thing was that the way that it came to an ethical side of things, that he sort of felt like it was okay to do that, and I sort of felt like that wasn't okay to do that. Yeah. So that resonated big big with me because I'm a big person on um, on my, my morals and doing the right thing by the people. I believe yeah. in karma. Yeah. Um, and so I just I – just, decided to branch out from that one and then the second employer that I had was absolutely fantastic and and the, those employers in those office scenarios it's pretty much copy paste guys they've all got brochure templates they've all got flyer templates they've all got mm. listing um, materials that you can use they've all got set and proven ways of attaining listings and mm-hmm. and it's all template all you gotta do is put your name and your face onto it yeah um, and just start copy and paste copy That's what true. other people are doing that are successful and just paste it with your details and just replicate until you start to get your own feet and find your own style, yeah. and then you can sort of do your own thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But apart from that, it's an amazing career. If you, um, any of you need any help, reach out to either Bjorn or myself, and um, 
I would be happy to help, wouldn't we? Always happy to help anybody and uh, always only ever a phone call, email or SMS away. And uh, yeah, guys, good luck with your career. If you're listening to this and you're a brand newbie in the industry, just know that the couple of years that it takes to get up and running are 100% worth what's to come. Mm -hmm. So hang in there, uh, be a good person, treat people with respect, give people what they want, talk and communicate well, and you'll be fine. Absolutely. All right, see you next week. Take care, guys. Bye for now. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have a question about real estate, then please join the group on Facebook, also called Let's Talk About Real Estate. For those of you who are interested in EXP, please join us at 10 a.m. Brisbane time every Wednesday morning for EXP Explained. Thank you again for joining us and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and see you next week.